Hey everybody, this is Brent from Wolf on Wall Street Trade with a market update for the week ending April 3rd, 2020. First of all, initial claims were just horrible this week again. Let me see if I can give some context here. Okay, so the guy who put this together, Len Kiefer, I think his name is. So let me just come down here a little bit. This is on Twitter, so you can look him up. Initial jobless claims, you can see the dates down here, 67, 68, 69, 70. So let's just play this little GIF, and this will give you some perspective of what the initial claims were like. So let's go through history here, 1972, 74, here's 80. You've seen these spikes in initial claims, that's basically recessions. So here we come, 2000.com bubble right there. There's the financial crisis, and here we come. just unbelievable. I've never seen anything like that. So you'd think it would be uh, pretty bad for the market this week, but not too bad. So here's the S&P 500 down about 2.10% uh, on the week. And if you recall from last week's video, this big rally was one big short squeeze. And I showed that on my most shorted index. This is a one minute chart, the S&P 500. This white line is the most shorted stock. So they squeezed, that was this rally. And then as we got into Thursday, that short squeeze started to lose momentum over here. And uh, kind of looking for some downside this week as of last week. So let me show you real quick what I had written. And this would have been on Friday, March 27th. So that would have been right here. Here's the afternoon update for my members, March 27th, that Friday. And here was the gist of it. We ended with a small bear flag over here on that Friday. And it said the small bear flag today suggests a near-term pullback coming into this past week of about 4 to 5%. And you can see where I had a rough estimate target right here, just a little bit below 24.50. So on the week, here's that Friday, and we got down pretty close to about the target, right in this 24.50 zone. So here was that Friday. We came into Monday and just continued that flag. Almost wasn't a consolidation because it almost broke out above this level. NASDAQ did briefly. That was kind of a head fake, but we eventually got it, eventually broke down here. And look how we just continued down on Wednesday and Thursday in these little small bear flags. I went short in IWM late Friday afternoon over here. So pretty much just saw these bear flags, right? So I had no reason to get out. But when we made a higher uh, high right over here, and it's just a minor higher high, I closed out my short. And basically it was right where I expected. It was about a 12% gain because I used a three times uh, leverage ETF, bear ETF. And when we look at the other averages, you'll see small caps were a lot worse. You can see they just have a downtrend here at the end of the week. So small caps were down 7% on the week. And this is something we had seen the prior week into the rally. You might recall I was talking about it in last weekend's video that small caps made a higher low here and they led the broader market up into this rally and turned around and led the market lower this past week. You can pay attention, you know, to how they perform during the day versus the S&P or you can just use a relative strength indicator. And here's IWM's relative strength versus the S&P 500. Here's where it turned up, led the market higher. And then as we came into this week, here's that last Friday, started to show relative weakness versus the S&P and then closed down here. You know, real relative weakness at the end of the week. It was down 7% versus the S&P down just a little more than 2%. So this is one of the things I always look at and I always talk about is small caps tend to lead the broader market. They did a good job of it back here. They did a good job of it over here. And as we're heading into next week, they are still showing relative weakness. So they are leading the broader market lower heading into next week. So let's take a look at the S&P 500 again. And you might notice I have a bear flag here marked out at the end of the week. And I said we had a change in character on Thursday right here. So what you have is a smaller bear flag. It's small. It's tight. We don't have a big drop here. So it suggests a small pullback. This is pretty much the target that we hit, what I was looking for. But as we got into Thursday, got this change in character where price volatility really picked up. And now you can see we have a wider flag. So what happened was we had this tweet from Trump about the Saudis and the Russians cutting back uh, their output for oil. And that sent oil just skyrocketing higher. Here's USO for crude oil. It's right here. It's just this huge move. I think it was 24% that day. Biggest move crude has ever had in its history on the upside. So it had its best week ever. And last week was its worst week ever. So just craziness. So we had this zone of resistance right around 2530 over here, which was apparent. You know, we could see it, especially like Friday morning. It was really apparent. So we didn't know quite what we were going to get here. But when it could not, you know, get over this overhead supply and the overhead supplies from back over here, things turned and small caps got a lot worse early Friday morning and just led the broader market lower. So we had this kind of larger bear flag over here as we end the week. Now, this week could have been a lot worse, especially if it weren't for crude. The other thing was volatility was just crushed all week. 
Here's VIX on the week. You can see it was down almost every single day. So on a week that the S&P was down 2%, small caps were down 7%, VIX was down 28.5%. They just hammered this all week and that really helped stocks out a lot. So the sell-off in stocks could have been a lot worse if it weren't for this persistent seller in volatility. And this wasn't just, you know, volatility is drifting down. Somebody was there every morning before the open selling this hard in VIX futures. If you had puts last week and your puts didn't make as much as you thought, here is the reason why. On a 60 minute chart, you can see that VIX really is just pulling back and correcting kind of in this pennant type formation. If we look closer, this pennant trend line comes in right about 50. So that's where I was kind of interested on Friday. Is it gonna show some support there? Let's take a closer look. And remember, after the market uh, failed, after the S&P couldn't get over that overhead supply Friday morning, VIX was down. So here's that 50 level closed below that. But I think this is going to be an interesting level next week. It's kind of make or break for volatility here. Does it get defended? And I think that really has a lot to do with what happens with crude oil and the OPEC meeting early next week or whether it's on or off at this point. S&P sectors were just all over the place this week. So energy, which has been one of the worst performing, was the best performing this week. It was up over 5%. And you can see it has this kind of constructive price pattern where it rallied up. And it's kind of consolidating a little triangle here with some support down here around 29, resistance around 31. It's a constructive pattern. You know, it's a pretty bullish pattern. But that is like one of the few sectors that looks good this past week. Technology sector, it didn't perform too bad on this week, but you can see how it ended the week with a bear flag. And there's this kind of uh, upper range support, what I was defining as the range in here. So this upper range support is kind of hanging around, but you know, we had this bearish kind of consolidation here, breakdown and a bear flag over here. I see the same thing in semiconductors. This was early in the week, smaller bear flag. Here's the break and then bear flag right along what looks like it may be a much bigger bear flag. I'm not even going to get into that at this point. Healthcare actually ended the week higher, but it did end with a bear flag as well. The real estate sector didn't perform very well. Bear flag. Here's the financial sector and the financial sector was down quite a bit this week. It was one of the uh, weaker performers down six and a half percent, but the banks were really bad. So let me just put on uh, relative performance here, the banks. Here's the regional banks in blue and the KBW bank index, same thing. They're both down about 11% on the week and they're leading the financial sector lower. So if you look at semis, they're slightly leading technology lower, transports are slightly leading the Dow and industrials lower. The retail sector is leading consumer discretionary lower. So basically all the real growth sensitive stuff is leading the broader sectors lower the same way that small caps are leading the broader market lower. Getting back to crude oil real quick. So this has been best week ever for crude oil, but you can see it's a drop in the bucket compared to what it's lost and this real bearish tone. But as we got into this week, let me zoom in a little bit closer. Here we are on a five minute chart. So last week I had these bear flags and it was coming down small bear flags. And then as we get into Monday, here's another small bear flag, but notice it almost comes down to its target, but then kind of improves. And then crude itself held up right along this $20 level. And I was telling my members, you know, this is a really important level for crude. And then that next uh, morning or Thursday morning, President Trump came out with this tweet. It sounds like he may have uh, exaggerated a little bit because the Saudis and the Russians have basically said, uh, well, not quite. But anyway, everybody who was short crude oil, which was everybody, got squeezed. They got killed over here. And you can see a very uh, definitive change in price action from these bear flags to a strong move up, big bull flag, another move up, a small little uh, bull flag over here and keeps moving up. So the idea, at least as of Friday's close, was that OPEC was going to hold a virtual meeting, our OPEC plus, which means including Russia. But as of right now, when I'm recording this, it sounds like that meeting might be off. They're already spatting again, uh, Russia and Saudi Arabia. So let's just work with what we know as far as the price action on the charts. Here's the 10 year yield. It had been trading a lot like crude dropping, uh, bearish consolidations dropping. So here it is into this week with a bearish triangle. Here is Friday breaking down below that. So that's a bearish uh, development. It did not you know, have this big impulsive break lower. It's kind of hanging around the underside of this consolidation. It looks bad, but it hasn't had this sharp break lower. And that's probably because crude was up on the week. But basically what the bond market has been saying is it's just not buying this rally in stocks, this counter trend rally in stocks. So here's where that leaves us. In my opinion, this is a bear flag for the S&P 500. It could be worse, but it's a bear flag. It broke down a little bit on Friday and then kind of back tested into it. So a real bad bear flag break would just be a straight down, you know, the flag pole. So we didn't get that. We kind of got a back test of it. And I saw the same thing in uh, the NASDAQ. So here's the NASDAQ. 
bear flag here and there's kind of an important range or important zone of resistance support you know this upper end of this range here so kind of bear flag hanging around that same thing with the Dow I read that as a bear flag but hanging around you know the upper end of this range so you could say you know just kind of trying to hang in there but what makes this more damning for me is the way small caps ended the week their relative performance going back to all that and let me just add small caps here so here's small caps in white and remember, they didn't have that bear flag. They were trending down at the end of the week. So you can see they're leading the S&P 500 lower. They're acting like an anchor. It's just a minor downtrend at this point. We do have, you know, sectors like energy that look a lot better with this kind of bullish action over here, like a little symmetrical triangle after this rally. So basically you have support down here around 29 and resistance up here around 31. So that's something to watch. And this, of course, is going to depend on what happens with crude oil in this OPEC meeting early next week, which looks like it might be off again at this point. And just remember and contrast that with some of the other sectors, like the technology sector, semiconductors, similar to the S&P, similar to the NASDAQ and the Dow for this kind of bear flag. And one last thing, let me show you real quick. This is a five minute chart of the NASDAQ 100. Here's the rally. Here's this kind of uh, slump pullback, whatever you want to call it from last week. And this is the uh, NASDAQ composites advanced decline line. So you can see at the highs over here, this was where that head fake was. Just kind of popped out of this little channel head fake. Caught the buyers off guard. You could see a negative divergence in breadth there. And as we end the week, breadth is making lower lows over here as opposed to prices which have not made a lower low yet. So breadth is leading lower and that's because um, basically the majority of stocks are not acting well as you can see with the Russell 2000. And if we look at NYSE's advanced decline line it's the same thing a negative divergence here and leading lower to end the week. And one final thing. So credit was looking real good the prior week. It was actually leading the S&P 500 higher and as you can see it was kind of in line most of this week. So credit assets not looking good on Friday and leading lower. Despite crude oil higher, despite the energy stocks higher, that's not a good look. That's part of why I'm just looking at this as a bear flag going into next week. But there is some room for things to happen. You know, I think a lot of it depends on that OPEC meeting. A lot of it is going to depend on what happens with volatility. If they continue to be effective at selling volatility this week. And for members, I put out my um, estimation of what kind of downside we'd be looking at for this. That hasn't changed uh, going into next week. On Friday, I was really hoping that we'd get a rally into the afternoon and I would be able to short this bear flag because my target level, once the flag breaks, is the same. It's a percentage decline. It's the same. So if I can get in up here and then have a stop right above this, you know, or somewhere above here, then I get that percentage decline plus all of this. Whereas if I short right here, my stop is much further away and I just have that percentage decline. I would have preferred to short somewhere up here towards the top of this flag. So I did not enter that. I had the short that I closed out. What was it on Thursday over here? And that worked out pretty good. So I'll just wait and see if there's a good opportunity and we'll see what uh, things look like in the beginning of the week. Like I said, keep an eye on crude oil and keep an eye on volatility. So that will do it for me. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to share it with somebody, I'd appreciate that as well. There's a link in the description of this video that will take you to the website and I do have some free posts there occasionally and you can also check out subscribing if you're interested in that. Get a lot of content every day. So with that, everybody stay safe. Have a fantastic weekend. Members, as always, I'll see you on Monday, but if something comes up Sunday night, I've been doing these briefs on Sunday night because something has always come up. I'll have a brief on Sunday night. Thanks a lot, everybody. Take care.